Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you about how to get the best photos from the DJI Spark. Now the Spark already takes darn good photos, but there's a feature that you may not know about that makes them even better. I'm going to explain what it is, I'm going to show you how to do it, and I'm also going to talk about why you would want to do it. I appreciate you for stopping by. Let's go. If you're into drones and gadgets, you are in the right place, my friend. Consider subscribing to the channel for more, and don't forget to click the bell, or else you may never know when I upload new videos. Kind of a quirk with YouTube right now. Okay, so we're talking about something called AEB, which stands for Auto Exposure Bracketing. Now, all of DJI's drones have an AEB mode, and basically what this mode does is it takes one properly exposed photo, one underexposed photo, and one overexposed photo. So you can see where the term bracketing comes into play. When you trigger a photo, the Spark will take three photos in quick succession. The purpose of the over and underexposed photos is to preserve highlights and shadows, or the light and dark areas of the image. Now after you've taken the photos, the next step is to merge those three photos, and the result is one high dynamic range or HDR photo. For example, when taking a landscape shot, the sky should not be blown out and the ground should not be overly dark when you're taking an HDR or high dynamic range photo. Now let's get outside so I can show you how to do this and then we're going to come back, get into Lightroom, and I'll show you how to create an HDR. Let's go. Okay, we're all set and ready to go. The sun is setting, so we don't have the best lighting conditions, but that that's actually a really good uh, time to test this. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do this. Let's go ahead and get in the air first. All right. And I'll go up, uh, I don't know, about 100 feet or so. Okay, go over to your settings. Now you see the camera is in single shot right now. Everything is, is in auto, okay? Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take one photo, uh, one single photo first. So let's do that. That's one photo. Then we're gonna come back in and select AEB. All right, and we're gonna take another photo. And you heard the camera take three consecutive photos okay so that's what happened there all right let's uh let's see if we can change our subject why not that this is a good one to do okay so we'll take see how this one comes out take a single photo come back change to AEB and let's take an AEB photo okay very good let's turn again we're gonna do it again we're gonna do a single shot Okay, and then we're going to come right back and do an AEB. There you go. Okay, now let me show you this. Let me show you how this is going to appear in your, um, in your images. Okay, so as you can see, you see this little uh, box here in the lower left-hand corner? That's going to indicate that you took three consecutive shots using the AEB function. And then you see right to the right of it there, you see the single shot that I took. Okay, so that's how you'll be able to identify it. All right, I think that's good enough. Uh, let's go back home and get into Lightroom, and I'll show you how to uh, merge these things together. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to combine the three photos to make your HDR photo. So we're going to get into Lightroom. Uh, it's Adobe Lightroom. That's the software that I use. There are other programs that you can use. I'm not as familiar with them. Uh, so that's what we're doing today. And it's easy, y'all easy peasy lemon squeezy <laughs> all right so let's get into lightroom here all right so here we are all up in lightroom we're going to import those into lightroom okay so let's get on over to the develop tab and here are the three photos okay so the first one is the properly exposed photo underexposed and overexposed and what do you notice about the uh, properly exposed photo? The ground is a little bit dark here. So there's uh, quite a bit of detail lost here. 
and the uh, the trees here we can tell that there's some pretty good color there kind of a golden color some orange and red and maybe some green as well we can kind of make that out and the sky probably looks the best um, because that's mostly looks like mostly what the drone was exposing for okay and here we're under and there we're over all right now click on control click on all three photos go up to photo and you see where it says photo merge now Lightroom you can do this right in Lightroom by clicking on HDR I don't really like what it does with the image though it really um, I think you have to do um, some tweaking in Lightroom to get it right so here's what I like to do I like to edit it in Photoshop so go to edit in and see where it says merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop click on that okay so it's gonna send those photos over to Photoshop and it's gonna go ahead and merge them and you'll see that in a second here okay so here is the result of the three merged photos and as you can see the sky is still properly exposed there's even a little more detail in those clouds and look at here the trees are brighter there's a little more detail we can definitely make out more colors and then check out the ground okay we can still see that there are some dark areas here but there's just so much more detail it's just a better image overall okay now there's some things over here that you can adjust I'm not gonna touch anything um, I'm just gonna keep it as simple as possible um, there might be instances where you want to tweak things but for the most part this is the process that I'm gonna follow now I do want to mention something about ghosting you see where it says remove ghosts you could click on that and what that's um, what that's referring to is you're taking three photos and there's a chance that the drone may have moved slightly um, as you saw the photos are taken pretty quick but what that's accounting for is any movement there probably was some movement in the trees because the wind was blowing uh, if there was a bird that flew by or a car or people walking or something like that it they would look like a ghost because there would be just a little movement like a blur uh, so you would click on that and adjust it but this looks pretty good um, let's see I'll go ahead and click on it anyway and see what happens let's see what happens okay so it 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 changes the image a little bit let me take it off and see which way I like it better I like that better it seemed to darken it a little bit by clicking on that so I'm gonna leave it as is click OK OK there it is all right, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put up a side-by-side -side of the two photos um, and when I say the two photos the original properly exposed photo and the HDR photo so we can really compare the two All right, y'all. So I took several more uh, photos using the AAB feature. So I'm gonna do a few more of these HDR photos for you, uh, just to give you some more examples, and we'll we'll do more comparisons as well. I think it makes a significant difference, and it's really easy to improve your images if you're running into these dark grounds and blown out skies or just poorly exposed photos. This is a great way to remedy that. Okay, so here's the side-by-side -side photos so you can see for yourself.
Here's how to use Photoshop all by itself to merge your photos and create an HDR. Import the three photos, then go up to File, Automate, and select Merge to HDR Pro. Click on Add Open Files, hit OK, and the merging process begins. And there you go. You can either use Lightroom or Photoshop, but again, Photoshop seems to work best for me. All right, that's it. If you're still here, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. I do not take it for granted. Check out some of my other videos. I'm going to leave a couple at the end of this video that I think you might like. And until we meet again, be good to somebody and be good to yourself. I'll see you in the next one. Later.